Hello, Mount Rudmore here, and I'm back to talk to talk about some more uh, Big Brother 25. And these last few days, they have been a whirlwind. Uh, there is a lot to get to just from tonight. In fact, I have a lot of notes here because my last stream was uh, Tuesday, I believe. You know, a lot's happened since then. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna try and brush through, blow through all of my uh, my notes from the last few days as quick as I can because I really, really want to talk about the eviction episode tonight. By which I mean I want to talk about the Thursday episode. But um, I am going to actually pick up where I left off from my last stream. Where I had just heard Jared's comment to Corey saying, you're not going to get picked. You don't have the personality. And I, that really set me off because that is just not how you talk to people. Like, come on, Jared. Sari is so good at making people feel like she is there for them and that she cares about them. So how is Jared so careless in his socializing? But from here, of course, like after my stream, it's kind of turned into a thing about how Jared took it personally that Corey took it personally. Like, you, you're twisting my words. I didn't mean it in any way. You're just taking it personal. Well, yeah. You can't say someone doesn't have an interesting personality and then expect them to not take that personally. Like, personality and personally, those are kind of intertwined. Because it all comes down to the person. So Jared tries to talk to Izzy about this, and, you know, of course, typical Jared method. To get someone on his side, he only mentions the convenient parts for him. He's like, Corey just took it personally that I didn't think Corey would be picked. But of course, Corey in America point out what he actually said. Like, you don't have the personality for it. And Jared just keeps going. You're taking it too personal. I didn't mean it like that. It doesn't matter how you meant it. That's how it came off. Trust me, as someone who has Asperger's Syndrome and has overthought every single thing I have ever said in my entire life, sometimes you gotta think your words through a little carefully. I have lost friendships over saying the wrong thing. I didn't, I genuinely did not mean it in any way. And yet, didn't matter. I lost that friend. And I don't think that's ever happened to Jarrett. He doesn't know how it feels to, to, to lose someone over saying the wrong words. Um... We get a lot of talks about the vote. Izzy's talking to Corey about it. Corey says he would rather Jag go because he's ratted him out too many times. Which is true. And was not a uh, a good move on, on Jag's part to do because Corey and America were definitely more on his side than he thought. Um, Sari hopes that it's some kind of superpower, and she tells Matt that she actually does think Corey has a good shot at being picked. And, uh, at this point, like, where my stream ended off, I was under the impression that people had been picked, and, like, I, I actually thought Red had been picked, because that's what I had heard. And I'm just like, hopefully he's not one of them, but if he is, then we really should not just go out and recruit TikTok people. You know, if they sign up, so be it. Like, they deserve a fair chance if they sign up, but just don't just recruit them. And then they just bring in their fan base to help them in a in a game that they had previously not really cared too much about. So, and like, Red is not super popular among the fandom. And for good reason. He's he's kind of annoying when he shows up. 
his his diary room voice and his house voice are completely different. Like you know, when he's talking in the house, he does just kind of sound like a like a regular. Like he sounds like a modern Southern guy. When he's in the diary room, he sounds like a like a prospector from the eighteen fifties. It's like, come on, dude. So yeah, there's there's my mini red rant. Uh, Izzy talks to Mimi, and she says Jag needs to go because they. Like, uh, we need Cameron to be comfortable. Which is kind of what they did with with Heisem. They gave him what he wanted in the vote. So that he really didn't see the blind side coming. But, you know, is he talking to Mimi about this and Mimi not really pushing back too much? I, I gotta say, this is... This was one of the weeks where Mimi was definitely going with the flow a little more than she usually does, and like not just ranting about it afterwards. I mean, I think at the end of the day, she doesn't care too much about Jag and Blue. Like, I do feel like if Mimi was just told, you know, go to the diary room, vote out the person that you want to leave, and don't even worry about what the house thinks, I do think she would have just gone in and said, I vote to evict Blue. But, yeah, she she doesn't push back, really, so that's when I'm like, okay, guess it's off. We're not flipping. Jag really is going. We're just going to give Cameron what he wants. And this is when the results start coming in, or we start finding out the results. Matt tells Sari that he was picked, and he's like, I think I had a pretty good time. And Sari decides to confide in him that she also got picked. But she says that she did not get a very good time. But she later thanked the audience, which made some people confused. Like, wait, did she actually win? And I'm just thinking, you know, she might have just been thanking the audience for, for picking her and giving her a shot. And as we saw on the episode tonight, she did not have a good time. Her time was 12 minutes. Matt's was 45 seconds. And they're both like, listen, we're only telling this to each other. And, um... We don't get confirmation as to who the other two are for a while, but we do get some clues. The first clue... That indicated that Corey was one of the four. He had a noticeable pep in his step. Like he he definitely had a, a new uh, a new level of confidence about him. And uh, Jag had a conversation with a uh, few people. I think Izzy was one of them, and uh, he just kind of he just kind of smirks a little bit. But then he tells Blue that he was not picked, so it's like, mm, maybe, maybe not. And then also some things Felicia was saying indicated that she also could have been picked as well. Uh, going back to Jared, he tells Izzy he doesn't trust Corey anymore, and this is clearly just more insecurity, because it, it's just from, from Corey daring to question him. Like, it's not even a matter of, like, like, any sort of masculinity stance. It's just, Jared cannot handle someone daring to question his view of the world. And th this is what he, this is what he was saying about Izzy before. Like, I don't trust Izzy anymore. After she pushed back on his first date bullcrap. So, like, Jared is just such an insecure person. And I cannot wait for him to get out of this house, which is not going to be for a while, I'm afraid. Like, let's just, let's face facts. Jared is, is cruising to minimum Final Four. Like, I will be very surprised if he doesn't at least make the Final Four. But whenever he gets access to the internet again, I cannot wait for him to see... The, the daily polls that have him as second from the bottom, only behind 
you know who. The re redacted. Because, again, I am doing my absolute best to not even mention that guy anymore. Like, they cut him out of the out of the intro. So even the show is trying to erase him. And I'm doing everything I can to not bring him up either. But, yeah, Jared is is second from the bottom, only to him. And then Jared starts saying, people watching the live feeds don't get the full picture. Like, you can't see under blankets. So, what were you wiping up afterwards, Jared? Because the only other option here is that either you or Blue had an accident. So, like... I always get really annoyed when, I mean, it's usually people coming out of the house saying, oh, you didn't see everything. Like, we got this last year with Paloma and Pooch. Like, you don't see everything. It's like, we see more than you. Because every house guest just has their perspective. But nobody sees every single thing in the house. And, and yes, the audience does not see everything, but we see a lot more. And and Jared, we uh we see you. We see your insecurity. We see your hypocrisy. And we've seen your girlfriend on social media, the one who is currently in possession of your dog and your social media accounts. So, yeah. Of course, America is the one who's like, they see everything. The live feeds show everything. And when they're on, yes, they do. But I, I guess in regards to the audience, the audience doesn't see everything, but they see a lot. Which is more than Jared. He sees, he, he sees his perspective and the perspective of whoever he's in a conversation with. But even then, he doesn't have the full scope of their perspective. To quote my uh, my all time favorite Terran rant, when he was talking about how Pooch got out and said the cameras don't show everything, he went on a really long rant about that last year, and he's like, "We know more than you do." Um, America, she starts getting bold, and th this is—I mean, this is just the start of her getting bold. She says she will. Put up Izzy and either Sari or Felicia if she were to win HOH. And personally, you know, as impressed as I am with Sari dominating this game, I am definitely down to see the power structure squirm a little bit. You know, we don't we don't want him to just walk to the end. And I said this before, like. I want Sari to to know some struggle in this game. I don't want her to just waltz to the end like Cody Cauliflower. So yeah, I am definitely down to see the power structure panic a little. But of course, I would much rather prefer she go for Jared. But she's saying this to Corey, and he's like, uh, you should not do that. That is not a good idea. And... He talks her out of it. And I mean, I see where he's coming from, but I also see that he is in a worse position in the house than he realizes. Uh, the fees were cutting a lot throughout the day, usually when people were talking about the twist, and it's like, come on. And one of these feed cuts that was kind of interesting was when America is talking to Corey and she starts to say that she's happy for him when the feed's cut. And that was uh, further proof for me that, that Corey was, was one of the four. Uh, 
Uh, Izzy and Corey talk about how jag leaving is more beneficial. Corey asks if he should do anything with the power. Feet's cut. And I'm like, this could mean that he won it, but it could also mean, like, the rest of the sentence could have been, should I do anything with the power if I win it? Or if I have it? So, I think at this point, um, he knew he had lost. I mean, he definitely competed. Uh, actually, no, he... I'm not sure if he knew at this point whether he knew if he had won or lost. Um, Blue talks to Bowie. She says that she doesn't want a bigger target on her back after just surviving the block, so she's planning to throw the HOH. And this is when I'm realizing Blue doesn't really care. And neither do I. I did care. I cared enough to pick her first in my draft, but... That... That that was wrong of me. I'm I'm man enough to admit I I rolled a gutter ball on my first round draft pick. My whole draft team I've been saying is not good. Blue Jag Matt Cameron Heisem. Heisem's gone and he's without a doubt the best player that I picked. But yeah, just when I see someone who doesn't really care, I'm like, okay, you can go. So, yeah, that's that was my number one reason for why I wanted Blue to leave over Jag, even though I was not expecting it at all. Uh, Corey tells Suri that he's dealing with people thinking he has a superpower. And I'm like, is he lying or not? They agree they still need to do Cameron and Red next, even if it's only to flush the power. And Corey seems to want it flushed no matter what. So he's like a true <laughs> Big Brother purist. He's like, no, enough of these twists. We don't need them. Let's just let the game go as it should. HOH, nominees, veto, veto meeting, eviction. And like, I, I get this because usually these twists flop. Or if they don't, then it just goes in a way that nobody wanted it to. And just nobody ends up enjoying it. Um, Sari talks to Jared about Matt having the power. So, at this point it is confirmed that Matt has won it. Sari is not sure what to tell him, but says that if he saves Jag, and they all vote him out, Blue gets no votes, and they both stay. If he saves Jag, and they vote Blue out, then the power is unused. But if it's used, everything resets, and Cameron can play HOH again. And I'm just like, what is happening? This whole twist just seems so confusing. I'm like, there's no way it actually works like this, but that's actually, I think, kind of close. I mean, I still don't know what the deal would have been if um, if they voted blue out and Matt decided to use it, like, what that would mean. But, yeah. That's, that's where I was at. Um, Blue finally starts campaigning a little bit. She talks to Cameron, and she's like, I'll throw the next HOH to you if it comes down to just the two of us. And he's like, I can't play. And she's like, yeah, that's for the best. Like, you shouldn't have a bigger target on your back. And then he has to explain, no, literally, I cannot play in it. He's the outgoing HOH. I'm like, Blue, come on. I, mean, I know she was recruited, but she did say that she she did watch a couple seasons. 
And even if she hadn't, like, did she not notice that Riley, Heisum, and Felicia did not compete in the next HOH competitions after their HOH reigns? Like, come on, Blue. So, like, I... I don't have a lot of respect for Blue, but it's because of her her gameplay, and I feel like I am I am justified in my lack of respect for her. Jared, in his lack of respect for her, I don't think he's very justified, because Blue asks him if he's heard that she's leaving, and he's like, "I wouldn't tell you. I don't need to." And it's like, have you ever socialized before? I just couldn't take it. I really couldn't. I can't stand the way... I can't stand the way... Uh, Jared talks to people. Whether it's Blue or Corey, or even to his own mother. I can't take it. By the way, um, in time it is confirmed that Corey and Jag are the other two people that that were in the top four. So it was Matt, Sari, um, Corey, and Jag. And Corey's time was 53 seconds, as we found out tonight. So he, he only lost by eight seconds. And Jag's time was a minute 15, if I recall correctly. And then Sari's was 12 minutes. So... But I mean, th if this isn't proof that you don't need to be good at competitions to dominate Big Brother, I don't know what is, because Sari doesn't need to win competitions. Yet. Down the line, she probably will. But, I mean... I mean, the second slowest time was still almost 11 minutes faster than her. <laughs> So, yeah. Um, this is when things started to look really hopeless for Jag, and I was just starting to be like, oh my god, this is hard to watch. I just, I can't even, I can't even. Jag wanted to get all the people he thought were voting for him in a room to lock it in. Like, okay, we just all get together and we just confirm it that I'm going to stay. Corey asks Sari, what should I do about this? And she's just like, don't go. And Corey's like, well, why'd you suggest it? Also, America realizes that Jag considers her one of his votes to stay, which she really isn't. But she says she'll be in only if Sari and her crew are. But now because Jag thinks she's part of it, she realizes they're telling Jag that they're going to vote for him to stay. And she's starting to feel bad for Jag. For, like, they're giving him false hope just like they did with Riley. And now America wants to get them in a room to throw them under the bus. And she realizes that when it comes if it comes up a split vote they're going to frame her and Corey so she wants to get them in a room confront them on this and she's just like let's sir, let's see what Sari the mastermind comes up with i love it i love the boldness but all she'll come up with is a way to get you next america And this is where it was really hard to watch. She's trying so hard to get through to Jag. Like, they are not voting for you to stay. They're lying to you. But he is so convinced that they wouldn't lie. They wouldn't lie to me. And I'm just like, I picked so many flops on my draft team. Like, Jag, it is Big Brother. Always assume you are being lied to. And pivot. So, it's like, come on, dude. I, it's just, it's so frustrating with Jack, because I, I really, really love him as a person. He seems like such a great guy, but he's just not good at this game. 
Like, he had a plan for what he wanted to do. It crumbled on week one. And he still hasn't really found a new strategy. And it's why he's at the bottom of the house. Um, America talks to Blue, and she just tells her, you're good. And she explains what they're doing to Jag about how, the, how they're basically like playing with their food. And America tells her that they're planning to pin it on, on her and Corey. America and Corey. So, yeah, it, it's kind of interesting she's having this conversation with Blue, because Blue is the other nominee, and America is kind of almost implying, I would rather vote you out, but she never says it in quite those terms, and um, Blue doesn't really seem to be capable of reading between the lines, so she doesn't really uh, catch that. Um, there's also a lot of sexism in that house about America, and the worst offender by far is Red. He's talking about her womanly wiles, saying that she's fast, which is to imply that she's, uh, I don't want to say promiscuous, like, I don't know if that's quite what he meant, but, but yeah, actually, yeah, I think that is basically, that, that was that was the implication he was giving off, so. Yeah, okay. That is what he was trying to say. And he doesn't want to be near her because he doesn't want to be around pretty girls. Like, dude, your your baby mama is 22 and you're 37. Just stop. And America knows that he has called her the B-words. And she wants to confront him about it, but Corey... Again, talks her out of it. I guess that one probably could get ugly, and maybe Corey's trying to spare her from that. So I'm, I'm actually kind of with Corey on this one. I want America to win HOH and take him out. But maybe confronting him could go a little sideways. Jag ultimately gets a lot of people in a room and gets them to say they're going to keep him, but they lie to him because they'd all just been like, I guess we just kind of have to lie to him right now. But he's convinced that it's real. Uh, Blue confirms that she's actually not going to throw the HOH. And I'd like to say I was relieved, but I was just like, so what? She's not going to win anyway. <laughs> oh, that's going to come back to bite me if she does win. But no, I I don't see it. I see Blue going her entire time in the Big Brother house not winning a single thing. Uh, Jared tells Jag, if you leave, I'll be blindsided. And it's like, this is just getting kind of cruel at this point. Thankfully, a little earlier, I mean, a little later, or maybe it was before, I don't know. At some point on Thursday, America talks to Serene, and she's just like, I gotta tell Jag. I don't want him to just have his heart broken like this. And Serene's like, yeah, okay, that might be for the best. So... So, America at least got to let him down easy. And you could see it on his face in the uh, in the episode, like during the live eviction, even during his speech. He, he knew it was coming, and he just looked pretty devastated. And sure enough, it's a unanimous vote. Again. And I was just like, whatever. Like, I'd heard the talks. I watched the talks in the episode that Matt and Suri were having. Like, maybe we should use it. And it's like, yeah, I know what you're doing. You're getting an edit going to, like, 
make it seem like there's some suspense, but I was just like, there is no way it's going to be used. They want Jag to leave. There's zero chance it's going to be used. And then it was used. <laughs> I Julie even said, like, during the voting, she said, Sari has convinced Matt to use the power, but I'm like, what? What does that even mean? I'm, I, even, even that, I was just like, no, it's not going to happen. Because that's that's how fooled I was by Sari. She fooled me, and I'm pretty sure most of the live feeders, into thinking Jag was just going to leave. She was not going to use the power. I keep... I keep talking about it like it's her power. Even though Matt won it. But listen, Matt won it and went right to her. And he straight up said in, in the diary room, I want to tell Sari because I want to build my relationship with her a little more. Like, I want to build trust with her. So, yeah, this basically was Sari's power. And she fooled me into thinking... It was not going to be used. And, like, it's honestly scary how good this game, how good at this game Suri is. Because she fooled me watching at home, thinking I knew what was going to happen. And I gotta give her props for that. It was... In a season where so far we have just gotten nothing but boring results. And it looked like this was just going to be another one. Out of nowhere. Jag gets his lifeline. He gets to stay. Red has to read the results of the twist. Jag is staying. The week is reset. But at least Cameron gets to play HOH again. And Cameron looked miserable. He's like, I cannot believe. The look on his face is like, I cannot believe this is happening. And I also could not believe it was happening. But unlike Cameron, I was happy about it. And I I really hope this is the thing that wakes Jag up. Because he has been several days behind since week one. And, I mean, he was just voted out unanimously. Or would have been voted out unanimously if the twist hadn't undone it. So, he knows that he doesn't really have a lot of people he can trust. But, I think if my dream comes true, and Jag wins this next HOH, I think he's just going to put Cameron and Red up. Because... It's basically what everybody else wants, and I think this would actually be a pretty good way for Jag to, like, regain a little bit of position in the house. I feel like he could move up a little bit. I I think Matt would only tell him that he won the power and saved him if Jag were to win HOH. Otherwise, I don't think Matt's going to say anything. Here's what I think. Here's my actual theory. Everyone has kind of been suspecting that Corey was one of them. Part of why Jared has been so mad at him. So I think Corey is going to be blamed. Sari is going to be like, oh, cl clearly Corey won the power and saved Jag to hurt Corey's position in the house. Because Sari does recognize that Corey is very sneaky, he's very slick, and if there's anyone that could manage to pull one over on her, it'd be him. So, she, I'm thinking she used this power to, or convinced Matt to use this power, to really try and bury somebody who's a bigger threat to her game than Jag, or Blue, and that would be Corey. So, uh, that's what I think. We'll, uh, we'll find out if I'm right. Uh, one second.
um, another thing that I have been suspecting is that clearly Sari and Jared were not in agreement at first about who should go. Like, I mean, okay, at first they were. They both wanted Jag out, but then Sari started to think, maybe it's better to keep Jag. And of course, Jared was like, no, I think it's better to keep Blue. But then even Jared started wavering a little bit as Sari was wavering a lot. So, it... I, I can't help but wonder if Sari chose to use... To have this power used... There I go again. I keep saying she used it. But I can't help but wonder if she decided to just... Um, let it be used so that her and Jared could both get what they want. She gets to keep Jag around, he gets to keep Blue around. Because I feel like maybe she just didn't want Cameron to actually succeed at his HOH. And listen... On paper, somebody getting their entire HOH week undermined and cancelled, basically. On paper, I should be mad that that happened. But I don't like Cameron. I like Jag. And just someone pointed out on Twitter earlier, I forget who it was, I think it might have been... Um, no, I, I don't remember who it was. But they said that, like, the, the first time they did the pressure cooker, the HOH betrayed somebody. Second time they did the pressure cooker, the HOH was betrayed. So. Yeah. Let's see if the trend continues where the winner of the pressure cooker is the next one out. Uh, the, the lady who won the pressure cooker, Jen, I believe was her name, in BB6. She won the pressure cooker, took out Kaser. Janelle won the next HOH, took out Jen. How amazing would it be if Cameron wins the pressure cooker, tries to get out Jag, fails, Jag wins HOH, and Jag takes him out. That'd be pretty great. Although, personally, it, even though I don't like Cameron, I think it'd be more delicious if America were to convince Jag just how unsavory an individual Red is. And Red became the target. And then America were to win the veto and keep Noms the same, Cameron and Red. And then she convinces enough people to vote out Red. Not everybody, because it's not a unanimous vote. Because, you know, the people in the House are getting tired of unanimous votes, but they still want Red to go. Wouldn't that be great? I'd love to see it. Okay. I'm trying to think, is there anything else about the uh, the episode? Um, at the competition, we finally got to see what it was, and uh, you know, it's a it's a classic. Get maneuver the board so the the ball doesn't fall off, and just get it to the end. It's a classic. I've seen it a million times. I've always enjoyed it. So, uh, yeah, I was. I was happy to see it again. I I wouldn't be surprised if this was a competition that Corey had actually trained for, because he's clearly a super fan of Big Brother. I mean, he didn't win, but 53 seconds is still a pretty good time. I mean, he only lost by 8 seconds to an Olympian. Alright. It's time to check... For updates. I can't imagine there's a new HOH yet, but Oh, first thing, before I check anything. Um something I've been doing every week. Um I put the house guests that are gonna be eligible into a randomizer, random.org, to pick who will be the next HOH. And it has yet to be right, but this week it picked Red, which would be a nightmare scenario because it would just be a repeat of of this past week. Jag and Blue would be nominated again. If Jag doesn't win the veto, he's 
gonna be voted out again. So, yeah. Oh, holy crap, I got five notifications. That's a lot for me. Uh, some other people are speculating that maybe they're just going to try and convince the House that Jag won the power and saved himself. But, I don't know. His reaction was pretty believable. Oh, is that what what Bowie meant when she said good acting? Didn't Bowie say that? Someone said good acting. Like, they don't believe Jag. Like, oh, of course he saved himself. Who else would have? All right, nothing on my main timeline yet. I'm going to check BB updates. I can't imagine there's a new HOH yet. I mean... There... There, there could be. I mean, it's been... The show ended three hours ago. But no. doesn't appear that that is the case. Yeah, I uh not really finding anything anything new, but I'm just I'm really happy right now, and I don't say that often after twists. They usually end up flopping in some kind of way, and it still could if they decide to just take Jag out again next week. Which would be really lame. So yeah, there is there is still a way this can flop, but honestly, I think there's a pretty good chance that if Cameron and Red don't win this next HOH, because again, Cameron is allowed to play again since his HOH reign was canceled. I think they will probably be the targets. Even over Jag, or Blue, or Corey, or America. I do feel like there's really no one in that house that trusts or likes Cameron and Red, so... I'm... I think there's a decent chance that if neither of them wins HOH next, then... Then they're probably going up together. Like, they had all the power in their hands, and, I mean, granted, this twist probably could have undermined it in some way, but even if this twist didn't exist, Cameron's HOH was a complete flop. He seized the power structure, but he did nothing about it. Like, it would have been one thing if it flopped against his will because of the twist, but no, it just flopped because he didn't really make a real move. He did the lamest move for his game, the lamest thing entertainment-wise. So, yeah, I'm I'm glad his HOH flopped. And I say this as someone who picked him for my drafting because I'm like, you know what? I think Cameron's going to surprise us. I think he's going to turn out to be a a pretty pretty decent guy, a real a, a good competitor. No. I mean, he's competed in every competition so far, and he's only won one of them. So, I mean, granted, it was the pressure cooker, but still. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so the people I most want to win HOH would be Jag number one because him going from voted out to HOH would just be glorious. He could get his revenge on Cameron and Red. And he could protect some some people that might otherwise be in trouble. Like Corey in America. But then again, Sari could easily talk him into going for them too. You never know. But I'm hoping this could be like Sorry, I have the hiccups and I just finished off my drink. This could be like Cliff's HOH in BB21. He won HOH immediately after being voted out, but then he won the Camp Comeback competition. And then he won HOH. And at first we were all like super excited about that, but then of course that week ended up being a flop. But still, here's hoping that, you know, if Jag were to win this week, then, you know, he could, uh, he could get it right. He could succeed where Cliff failed. Um, America and Corey, I think, would also be good people to win this HOH. They are not in a good spot in the house right now. I do believe they would go for Cameron and Red. America in particular. I mean, at the very least, America would go for Red. Uh, no, no, she'd go for both of them. She likes Jag. Corey, I feel like he probably wouldn't go for Jag, but I don't know. Matt winning HOH, I, I gotta tell you, if Matt wins HOH right after saving Jag from eviction, only to target Jag and take him out, that would just be the biggest waste of time ever. Like, could you imagine if that happened? That'd be so lame. So I'm hoping... I'm hoping if Matt wins, he doesn't just do that. But, again, reasonably confident he would do Cameron and Red. But I could also see him maybe doing Corey in America. So, maybe Matt is not super ideal to win this. HOH. Izzy would be a good HOH right now. She would definitely go for Cameron and Red. She hates them both. Um, Sari, I think, would probably do it as well. Felicia would probably do Cameron and Red. She doesn't care much for either of them. Blue, definitely Cameron and Red. And a blue HOH would actually not be the worst thing. I mean, I feel like she'd... I feel like Blue would just do what the house wants, but the house wants Cameron and Red, and she probably also kind of wants that, so I feel like she'd be like, okay. Or she'd just be like, okay, yes, let's do it, kitty, kitty, purr, purr, let's do this right her, Or just some some annoying fake Instagram bullcrap like that. H have you noticed I'm kind of over Blue? It's just, she's flopping for me so hard. But hey, you know what? She wins HOH, takes Cameron and Red out. Hey, she did something. I'll give her that. In that scenario, I would give her that. Uh, what else is there? Uh, Mimi. Yeah, she doesn't care about Cameron and Red. She'd put them up. Bowie. Bowie actually is probably the person who hates Cameron and Red the least outside of the two of them, but I feel like Bowie would just, again, do what the house wants and put up Red and Cameron. Um, have I gone through everybody? Jared. I did not go over Jared. <laughs> yeah, you think you're so great. I don't even remember that you're here. I'm trying to block him out. Can you tell? Um, yeah, I think Jared might go for Cameron and Red just on the basis of you guys tried to take out Blue last week, and I don't like that. And also, Jag's kind of my friend, too, and I don't like that. 
So, yeah. I don't really want Jared to win HOH, but if he does have to win one, this would not be a bad one to win. And also, never forget, the fifth HOH has never won a season. Week two, week five, they've never gone on to win. And, uh, you know, Heisem was the week two HOH, and he proved that stereotype pretty quickly. So. That's basically where everything stands. I think, uh, I just don't want uh, another Cameron HOH or a Red HOH. I want them to end up nominated. If one wins the veto, fine, just take out the other one. I'm going to check one more time, because I have been talking for a little bit since I last checked, but just in case there's anything new. Again, nothing on my timeline, just checking BB updates really quickly. Yeah, nothing. The last thing BB updates um, shared was a screenshot of the daily rankings where for the past week, Corey has been number one and Jared has been number 16. Yeah. Go ahead, Jared. Keep Keep telling... Keep telling me who who America likes, who has a personality that people like. Because you know all about having a personality that people like, don't you, Jared? Now, I do think he's lived his life in a way that has convinced him that he's Mr. Personality. He's the life of the party. He's the best guy to have around. And I think he's going to be humbled pretty quickly. I feel like he's going to go the way of certain egotistical house guests like uh like Jackson Mickey and uh and Monty from last year who are you know, like they hide from Twitter. They might have their their own thing going on Instagram where they can kinda protect themselves from anyone too ridiculous. I mean not uh, that came out wrong. Anyone who calls them ridiculous. Yeah, I think I think Jared's going to be humbled pretty quickly after this season. I, I said this once before, and I'm pretty proud of it. He's the combination of Monty and Kyle that nobody asked for. So, um... Yeah, I, I don't want Jared to win HOH just because I don't want him to have any power. I would... I see him going far in this game, so I would at least like for him to go really far and win nothing. And, like, if he's got to go far, then at least lose unanimously in the end, like Derek F. Last thing I'm going to say is I'm very thankful to Matt for using this power. And, you know, I've been kind of losing a little bit of respect for Matt the last few days because of some comments he's been making. But he... He saved this episode. He saved this from just being another boring end to a chaotic week. Just like another anti-climax. So I thank Matt for that. So I thank him for shaking things up, and I'm willing to look past some of the weird stuff he's been saying. But he better stop saying weird stuff. And if he does win HOH and just takes Jag right out immediately anyway, then I'm just going to think he's ridiculous. Like, why why waste the power like this? Oh yeah, and Jared said, I evoked. Oh, way to really remind me of Derek F. Like, I couldn't find another reason to hate Jared.
And that's about all I got. Thank you to my one viewer for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter for when I do find out who the next HOH is. I'll share my thoughts on whoever it is. Follow me on Twitter at NickGrimesYT, where I have links to my YouTube channel and my Twitch channel. And I will see you next time. It'll probably be, I think maybe after the, uh, the veto. After the veto competition. That's when I'll do my next, uh, my next stream. And so I will see you then. Peace out.